better price, more availability, and more VRAM? AMD might have just hit the trifecta when it comes to these GPUs. So I first wanna start off by saying huge shout out to Sapphire and AMD for allowing us to test these GPUs early before release. It really means a lot. Um, so I definitely had a lot of fun with these and I can honestly tell you I was very surprised when it came to the results. So we've all been waiting for this industry to have some sort of competition. As we all know, Nvidia has dominated the space for many years. Uh, they own about 90% share in the gaming space while AMD owns around 10%. So with the announcement of the AMD 9000 series, I was very optimistic about it uh, from seeing the specs and then the rumored pricing as well. Now one thing, as we all know, the MSRP on these cards, uh, we know that they showed 550 and 599 uh, from the uh, slideshow that they showed. Now these models, I don't have exact pricing as of yet. The rumor stated as this video is being recorded is that it's gonna be 899 for the 970 XT and right around the 820 price point for the non-XT variant. Again, not exactly accurate as of yet. I don't have that information, but soon that will be coming to light. So with the new RDNA 4, they're using a third generation ray tracing and a second generation AI accelerator. One thing I'm really excited for is the new Hyper RX technology because it is gonna be implemented in Star Citizen, which I play a lot of Star Citizen. So the frame rate is gonna be really lovely when I can enable that to get that triple or three times the amount of frame. Hey, what's going on guys? Future me, quick apology. I kept stating it as the 970 instead of the 9070. It clearly shows that what AMD did with the name change, it does work. It actually confused me. So just a quick apology on that throughout the video, I kept saying 970. So when you hear 970, I really meant 9070. All right, I'll let you guys get back to the video, enjoy. Now, I know why you all are really here. You guys wanna see the performance. Now, let me explain to you what we did here as far as the review. Um, the test bench we're using it is an AMD Ryzen 9800X3D. We're also using a uh, Gigabyte X870 ICE motherboard paired with 64 gig 6000 C30 RAM. And this is all being housed in a Haven HS420. Now, as far as the benchmarks goes, we're starting off with Monster Hunter Wild. Since the benchmark did come out, we decided, hey, let's use it. So as you can see, the AMD RX 970 averaged 86.47. The AMD RX 970 XT averaged 94.47. So you're looking right around eight FPS difference. And then the RTX 4070 Super averaged 66.77 and the RTX 5070 Ti averaged 83.62. So on this platform here, you can clearly see that AMD dominated very well. Uh, at the time of this review, we could not be testing the RTX 5070 against the 970, um, since the embargo date on that is a day later. So we wanted to at least benchmark it against the RTX 4070 Super. Now, obviously those are not cards are not available at the moment just because the market is crazy, but price point wise, it was the closest that we had in, in pretty much in house to test against the 970. So clearly here, you can see that the AMD RX uh, 9000 series definitely took advantage um, and pretty much to me, I think they won the Monster Hunter Wilds for sure. It also peaked at 51 Celsius on both the 970 and the 970 XT and the TDP on it was around the 300 mark for the XT and right around the 280-ish, 290 for the non-XT variant. All right, moving on to Assassin's Creed on this one as well. This is all max settings, everything enabled at 1440p. The RX 970 averaged 140 FPS, while the 970 XT averaged 148. And then you had the RTX 4070 Super at 104, and then the RTX 5070 Ti at 136. Once again, we're seeing that the 9000 series is definitely taking, taking the lead. And just to be transparent, Assassin's Creed is an AMD-based game, so you can clearly see that AMD did have a slight advantage in this game itself. Uh, again, peak temperature was 52 Celsius, and same, same TDP, very close, right around the, the mark that AMD was stating for the XT, right around the 300 mark, and then the 970 non-XT variant, right around the 280 mark as well. All right, moving over to Far Cry 6. Now this is, again, another AMD-based uh, game, and on this one, you can clearly see, once again, AMD's taking the crown. On average, the 970 non-XT did 167 FPS. Um, the RX 970 XT did 180 while the 4070 Super did 125 on average and the RTX 5070 Ti did 168. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well, the 1% lows, the FPS minimums did really well uh, for the AMD GPUs. Uh, clearly I was 
Before with the older generation AMDs, I did have some issues with the FPS lows, so this was actually really surprising and impressive. And again, it peaked at 54 Celsius on this one. Wattage stayed right around the same. And again, 1440p max settings as well. One of the reasons I did 1440p is I feel like that's become the industry standard. Um, so I feel like these cards themselves, I personally would stick around the 1440p range. They are at 16 gigs of VRAM and VRAM definitely becomes kind of tough at 16 gigs at 4K. Uh, the average at 1440p was around 10 gigs of VRAM usage. Uh, and then like Indiana Jones, for example, uses like 16 gigs of VRAM at 1440p. So just keep that in mind. You could you do 4K gaming with it, but it's recommended at 1440p for sure. Now, as far as Cyberpunk goes, we actually did two tests. We did one with no ray tracing and one with ray tracing. Um, the reason I did that is because Cyberpunk's path ray tracing, everything enabled really tanks a lot of GPUs. So starting off with the RX 970, you can see that it averaged 20.48 with a minimum of 18 and a max of 24. The RX 970 XT did 23 on average with a minimum of 20.94 and a max of 27.71. Now, Nvidia definitely takes the lead on this one. Uh, the 4070 Super uh, did an average of 24.59 with a minimum of 19.9 and a max of 30.19. And then the RTX 5070 Ti, pretty much in a league of its own, averaged 34.64 with a minimum of 27.52 and a max of 42.25. Now, if you compare the RTX 5070 Ti against the XT variant of the 9000 series, I mean, you can clearly see it's, it's, it's a pretty big jump. It's, it's on averaging around another 10 FPS, and the minimum of loaner, the RTX 5070 Ti, actually is higher than the average of the 970 XT. So again, it really comes down to, depending on the game you're trying to play. Uh, one thing I will tell you is when you're looking to build a PC, just look at the main games. For me, I, the, the main game I do is Star Citizen or Sea of Thieves. So this card would definitely be great for Star Citizen since it has support uh, from AMD for Star Citizen itself. So again, just look at your games, see what you're playing, and kind of base it off that. Now when it comes to Call of Duty Black Ops 6, this once again favors AMD quite a bit. Um, on the RX 970, the average was 270 FPS. And also, keep in mind, I did comp settings. So this is not at max settings, this is comp settings at 1440p with 1% 1 at 189 and the low 5th percent at 208. And the RX 970 XT did an average of 275, so 5 FPS higher than the 979 XT, so not too much there, with a low 1st of 185, again, only 4 FPS off the 979 XT, and the 5th was 205 versus 208, so again, not too much of a difference there. Moving on down to the RTX 4070 Super, we see a decent drop here on the average of 204, um, versus the 270 on the same price point with a low first of 148 and the low fits at 162. And then the RTX 5070 Ti creep back up to the 260 FPS average with a 189 on the lows uh, first percent and then the max fifth at 206. So again, AMD definitely took it on this one mainly again because just Call of Duty loves uh, AMD GPUs. And I did not experience any issues running uh, any of these benchmarks as a lot of people there's a thing going around called AMD Dip or AIM Dip or something like that, um, which to be fair, it does happen with, uh, with the last generation GPUs on some games, not on all of them. And that's just some people see it, some people don't. It just kind of varies. So on this one, it was pretty smooth. I had no issues. Uh, peaked at 290 watts for the 970 XT. Uh, and it actually peaked at 45 Celsius. So it was really interesting on this one. It definitely had lower wattage and a lower peak uh, when it came to heat itself and very similar for the 970 non-XT as well. Now, Forza Horizon, I did two things here, and this is what I wanted to do. So max settings on, of course, across the board, 1440p. And what I wanted to do is test it without streaming and then test it with streaming. Because I did want to test the encoder on the new 9000 series GPUs, as Nvidia, people favor Nvidia for the encoder when it comes to actually streaming. So on Forza Horizon, uh, at Max settings 1440p, the non-XT averaged 158 FPS, while the XT variant averaged 166. The RTX 4070 Super averaged 146, and then the RTX 5070 Ti averaged 174. So the RTX 5070 Ti definitely beats um, the XT model from the AMD 9000 series, and the 4070 Super doesn't come too far behind at 146 versus 158 versus the RX 970. So pretty close there, but things start turning a little bit when I started streaming and did the encoder. 
So the encoder itself, what I realized is that with streaming at the same time, the FPS dropped from 158 to 153 with the RX 970, and on the XT went from 166 to 162, and then the FPS difference on the NVIDIA side of things was actually pretty drastic. We went from 146 average on the RTX, or on the RTX 4070 Super, all the way down to 110. That's a pretty drastic drop. Also with the RTX 5070 Ti, we went from 174 all the way down to 159. So that's another drastic drop. So again, I was very impressed with the streaming and gaming on a single PC setup with the 9000 series GPU. So single PC setups out there, honestly, the 9000 series is gonna be a great GPU to stream on and honestly, something good to use as a dedicated streaming PC as well. Dune benchmark was a little special added thing while I was benchmarking, the benchmark did come out. So I was like, hey, why not? Let's just throw it in there. The way they did it, there's three portions of this benchmark. Uh, you have the player bases, you have the Haraku uh, village, and then you have the sandstorm or Sandworm, sorry. So the RX 970, we're gonna compete this directly with the RTX 4070 Super, averaged 78.3 uh, at the build basis for the player build bases, and the RTX 4070 Super did 70.7. So seven FPS more there. Um, the minimums were pretty pretty good, 10, 10 FPS more, well, nine FPS more on the 970 uh, as far as the minimums, and then 12 FPS more on the maximum as well. Moving on to the RX 970 XT, you can see that on the player bases as well, did 85.3 versus the RTX 5070 Ti did 84.6. Uh, minimum was 77.9 on the 970 XT, and then the 5070 Ti did 72.2 with a maximum of 102 versus the RX 970 XT at 108. So it's pretty close on these benchmarks. Uh, you can see the minimums were a little bit better on the XT variant. Uh, but performance-wise, very close. It, it pretty much, to me, it really comes down to price and, and availability is the other big thing. But you can see the rest of the charts here with the Village. Uh, once again, very close, 92.6 versus 91.2 on the RTX 5070 Ti versus the 970 XT. Same thing goes for the 970 non-XT at 82.6 versus 76.9. So again, a few frames there, nothing crazy. Uh, so once again, these are pretty much just kind of going head to head when it came to the Dune benchmark. And again, this is no frame generation, um, no, AFS, no FSR, um, no DLSS, no, none of that stuff. We just did full on raw rasterization with ray tracing performance on and off in some games. And uh, we can clearly see that they're going back and forth quite a bit. Uh, when it comes to Time Spy itself, that's something we would definitely want to talk about the GPU score. Now, as far as Time Spy, just GPU score, the RX 970 did 27,722. Did really well versus the RTX 4070 Super did 20,370. And then the RX 970 XT did 29,824 versus the RTX 5070 Ti did 26,227. So here just in raw synthetic benchmarks, the non-XT variant is actually outperforming the RTX 5070 Ti. Um, and again, that GPU, I know the MSRP is 750, but we have clearly seen that the MSRP cards are pretty much non-existent. Uh, they're upwards of 800 and above. Some of these cards going up to $1,100, uh, which is pretty crazy. So seeing that this just is be coming out tomorrow, um, since I'm recording this will be the following day, um, this GPU, hopefully it stays closer to the MSRP price point. Obviously there's different variants, OC models. Uh, you know, AIB partners have, you know, overclocking capabilities. They have OC models that do three pin, eight pin, that give you a little bit extra juice. So there's gonna be a lot of added features as well that people will pay for extra. So it just really depends on the price difference between all those different variants. And you kinda, kinda make that choice for yourself at that point. All right, so which GPU are you gonna choose? Are you gonna go with NVIDIA? Are you gonna go with AMD this time around? Um, there's a lot of questions and it's kinda funny because here in the warehouse we have some team members that are wanting to build a new PC and this is the first time that they're trying to debate between Intel or AMD when it comes to CPUs and trying to debate between NVIDIA and AMD when it comes to GPUs. Back in the day, it was pretty clear cut on a lot of things, uh, especially on the Intel side. Um, but then on this side now with GPU side, AMD definitely came out swinging with the 9000 series GPU. Me personally, I'm going to be using the 970 XT uh, for my office here because I do stream in game on one PC here at the warehouse. And I feel like this GPU is gonna do fantastic for me. Now at home, I'm rocking an RTX 5080, which Again, this GPU is not that far off when it comes to performance. In some games, um, Monster Hunter Wilds, little bonus here, um, the 5080 averaged 95 FPS, while this averaged 94.76. It was off by like 
0.50, 0 0.56 or something, something very close. So again, this thing's a monster for what it can do and what can accomplish. So I give my hats off to AMD. They did a phenomenal job with this. And also Sapphire with this amazing design, um, definitely feels kind of weird using the eight pin again, since we've been so, you know, so used to the 12 pin uh, connector. And this Sapphire model is just absolutely gorgeous. I love the all white. My build here at the warehouse is completely all white as well. So this is just definitely aesthetically gonna look so clean and so good in the office. So that is pretty much it guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe.